I'm the Making a Connections Project Development Officer for CAVS. There are 15 of us across Wales, so we work in the convergence areas. And from this project, what we've decided is to create um, another website, in addition to CAVS website, so that's still going, called the Triple Sector Shirgar Third Sector CAM. The reason we thought that it would be a good idea is basically because we, need, we want to reach a wider audience in Carmarthenshire. This website is going to be like a virtual place for people from the third sector to engage with other third sector organisations as well as um, organisations within the statutory sector. We all know that more and more emphasis is being placed on the third sector at the moment to deliver public services. So this is just going to be in an addition to the CAVS website. My name is Joanna Jones and I'm the uh, Local Service Board Development Officer for Carmarthenshire. Um, and thank you very much for inviting me this morning to give you an update on the LSB and also the Single Integrated Plan which we have here in the company. Um, for, you, for those of you who are not familiar with the LSB... Um, um, I'm Melanie. I work for the uh, Social Care Workforce Development Team based within the local authority. Uh, the Social Care Workforce Development Partnership is grant funded by Welsh Government and match funded by the local authority and it's a pot of money that comes down to uh, the region to fund social care training, uh, social staff training and volunteers as well. Like this. Um, so <coughs> time credits in Carmarthenshire or time banking in Carmarthenshire, um, I think we, we all came around to the same time which um, I think lots of people said oh but there's lots of you um, and I think what we've done we've embraced that. Um, and we celebrate that um, we have a number of, of time banking, time credit programmes in Carmarthenshire. So it's a very exciting time and, and I'm very excited to be part of it. We've come here today to, um, to find out how we can develop our service um, with other service providers and with the statutory sector mm -hmm. um, to really see how we can, we can share resources and learn from each other and to understand the mechanisms that the, there are available to help us to do that. And okay. it's, um, what, what was uh, very interesting for us today was to, to, to be able to have an overview of um, how this all works. Yeah. So if you look at a website or something, you, you see bits but you can't see it all yeah. together. Yeah. And it was also very heartening to sort of see the, the passion and the vision that um, in our particular area that the health board seem to have about wanting to make it happen. Yeah. Wanting to link, link um, everything, together. everything together. And that was really, really encouraging.
name's Jane Davidson, and um, uh, I'm director of Inspire, the Institute for Sustainable Practice, Innovation and Resource Effectiveness at this university, the University of Wales, Trinity St. David. And what we've been trying to do here, in essence, is to look at what the, in, the um, delivery of a future generations bill might look like in a university setting. And so we are, in a sense, a pilot uh, for uh, the Future Generations Bill that we hope will be uh, published in June. And we have now a national conversation, which the Minister has asked Peter Davis, as the Sustainable Futures Commissioner, to undertake uh, on behalf of Wales in terms of looking at what is the Wales that we want. But the Future Generations Bill started off as being the Sustainable Development Bill. Uh, it changed its title largely to make it more understandable. It also, in its development, uh, moved responsibility from being the responsibility of the Environment Minister to being the responsibility of the Minister for Communities and Tackling Poverty, uh, and Jeff Cuthbert. Important, that change, because it gave a signal that this bill is important as, as the environment critically is. Uh, it is about it's, uh, the economy, it is about the community and tackling poverty as well as about uh, the environment. So it is about the legacy that we leave for future generations. It's essentially about providing <coughs> better mechanisms to improve our decision making for the long term. You know, democracy is a pretty good system but it's heavily driven by short term electoral cycles. What we're trying to do in this bill is to introduce some mechanisms that will improve our governance for the long term. Over Crosso Canis, you can have Lil Cantab, Tess, Ariano, or Donna Vanir, with Saka Boy, with Sayahid. Crosso Mauri Higid and Lord Hedi, with more Valkyrie, with Minto Hedi, but a door of my Hedi, Aka, Rin Couture, begging the door not through the Anis Yawn. In terms of welcomes, it's a particular welcome to the Minister for Health and Social Care, namely Professor Mark Drakeford. Welcome back to Kamarthen. Mark, in terms of uh, this is your old stamping ground, obviously, uh, having seen the, from your biography um, that this was uh, you're from West Wales originally. And thanks very much for taking the time today from a, what is probably a very busy schedule in sparing us the time today to actually address the conference and to officially launch what I hope will be a very interesting day. I'd like also like to thank um, all delegates and speakers here today across all sectors and in particular those from credit unions across Wales and beyond really. I think um, we need to have better contact, better communication with credit unions as a health service. I think today might be, well be the catalyst to building up those relationships. Thank you very much indeed for the opportunity uh, to be here and to talk to you on an agenda which I think is especially important for us here in Wales. Now you will hear uh, during the morning of the new research that looks at the connection between health, mental health and financial insecurity and none of that I'm sure will come as a surprise to people in this room. Uh, the impact on mental well-being of the daily struggle to survive financially and the oppressive nature of death where people feel that they simply cannot see a way out of a set of difficulties into which they have fallen are intimately uh, connected.